Today will be short. I'd like to keep it at about 20 minutes, 25 the most. Um, we're going to go through a slideshow presentation. I will record this, and if you'd like a copy later on, I will be happy to share it with you. But today's topic is on essay writing. Um, so we have 701 right now. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, we may have a few people come in kind of late. And as I said before, as they come in, I'm going to record the meeting and I'll share it via email with you later on. So today's session is on essay writing for college admissions. Um, this particular presentation is designed for juniors who are rising seniors entering the summer after junior year and you are getting ready to start brainstorming and drafting some essays. So before you do that, we have some tips and some guides for you. There is no right or wrong way to write an essay, but there are some guides and we're gonna go through those today. So let's just get started. I can get my, screens to, my screen to work here. Here we go. So welcome everybody. In this session, we're going to review the new Common App essay questions. They haven't changed much in the last five or six years, so we'll just review those and um, give you a sense of the topics that you could possibly write about. You're going to see a very common theme amongst those. We're also going to share on how to create an outline and how and why somebody would want to do an outline some tips on how to open and close your essay. And typically when we do this presentation in person, we do a creative writing exercise to help ignite the senses. We won't have an opportunity or the time to do that exercise today together, but I'll, I'll give you the instructions and I'll encourage you to do something like that at home to give you some practice putting into play the things that we're, we're discussing. So here are the new essay questions for the Common App. These are just released. Now, for those of you who are new to this and you, you're just starting to create a Common App, there is a place that you can go in and see these questions. Um, sorry guys, I have a message coming in from a student trying to log on having trouble. So anyway, as we're looking at these essay questions, um, number one talks about identity, interest, talent, something that is meaningful to you that you believe would enhance your application. Um, give me just a moment. Trying to get some other people here in on our Zoom session. So number one, some students have a background, identity, interest, or talent that is so meaningful that they believe their application would be incomplete without it. Um, so what are some examples of background, identity, interest, or talent? It doesn't have to be something that you have to try hard at. Essentially what they're asking is, who are you? And who is the, who is the authentic? you and does it have anything to do with where you come from who your parents are your legacy um, or does it have to do with how you identify you know in this day and age students and um, teenagers are identifying in different ways ways that we didn't maybe identify when we were younger what are, maybe you have a special interest or hobby or passion or a talent, and those are things that maybe we didn't find a place in your application to put that. Those would be great things to write about because essentially the admissions department is just trying to get to know you and find out something more than just the numbers. So the second question or prompt, I should say, is the lessons we take from obstacles we encounter can be fundamental to later success. Recount the time when you faced a challenge, setback, or failure. 
<clears throat> how did it affect you and what did you learn from the experience? So let me just say that 85% of students choose the first prompt um, because it just seems like it's very vague in general and there's something they can write about that will fit that prompt. So it's very common um, for students to write on number one. But I really encourage you to take the time to read the others and make it a more specific essay, if you will. Um, again, we're not trying to be extra or trying to be tryhards here. We're going to be authentic and original and we're going to have our own voice in it. But we also don't want to be lazy. And I think that's what a lot of admissions people think is that students are too lazy to read all seven prompts and they just figure number one is easy and they go with it. So if you want to stand out a little bit, maybe one of these other six prompts will ignite something in you. So number two, the lessons, talking about lessons from obstacles, a challenge, a setback, or failure. You know, sometimes it's hard to think of a time that maybe we failed or we were rejected and we don't always wanna share those things. Now, there are some cliche things that you wanna stay away from. So those who are maybe playing sports, avoid writing about like the big game where you fumbled but then you picked it up and you you ran it for a touchdown those kind of essays have been written every year over and over um and even though it speaks to a, a big moment in your life it will not necessarily speak to you and it definitely won't speak to an admissions representative so um a personal challenge is something that you know speaks to your character like Maybe you had a dilemma of some type or um, a failure of some type. And I think for the admissions people, it's not just about experiencing the failure, but how did you come back from that? How did you um, pick yourself up and move forward? And how did you succeed after that? And what did you learn from it? So number three is focuses a little bit more on your activism and your social voice, if you will. The prompt says, reflect on a time when you questioned or challenged a belief or idea. What prompted your thinking and what was the outcome? Um, so some of the prompt or some of the essays that have been written in the past that incorporated this particular prompt I remember there was a young lady who experienced racism in her high school and she was an African-American girl. She is an African-American girl and after her particular experience, she wore a t-shirt to school um, that read Black Lives Matter and it created a conflict and it even, you know, there was a, even a disruption with the administration where they said, you're not allowed to wear these types of shirts because they're too controversial or they're too political. Um, but she took a stand and she challenged the administration on their rights to talk about these kind of social issues. And she formed an organization and she engaged the Black Culture Club and it turned into something very um, powerful and enlightening for not just her and her immediate circle, but for the whole school, because it was a time when um, there was a lot of police brutality, things that were happening that, that she was experiencing personally, that she was able to make a difference in her high school um, by speaking up and then challenging the belief of others. Um, so, and that turned out to be a really good essay. Number four, um, describe a problem you've solved or a problem you'd like to solve. It can be an intellectual challenge, a research query, an ethical dilemma, anything that is of personal importance, no matter the scale. Explain its significance to you and what steps you took or could be taken to identify a solution. So, an essay that I saw written for this particular prompt was from a student who attended high school, I believe it was Cinnaminson, 
where the uh, National Honor Society had a, a set of rules um, for what it would take in order to qualify for NHS. And if you don't know this, each high school has their own guidelines and their own expectations for volunteer hours, grades, participation, um, and they sign their, they have their own point system when they go to nominate students and essentially um, induct them into the National Honor Society. Even though it's a national organization, each high school has its own, um, I guess, uh, parameters that they use. So it, at this particular high school, we were seeing problems where a student who was maybe very academic but lacked some of the activities, the sports activities, was not, this student wasn't receiving an invitation to join National Honor Society. And it, it seems very um, hypocritical or counterintuitive because, you know, it's supposed to be recognizing those who have strong academic performance, but because a student maybe was involved in other things and didn't have a sport, they were missing some of the points they needed to be inducted. So um, one year, this student was able to um, challenge the rules on that and overturn some of the rules that had been in place for many years. And it was a very unfair situation. And so, and she was successful in doing that. And that was a really good topic to write about because it showed some proactiveness on her part. Um, it showed some problem solving skills. And um, it definitely was something that was personally important to her. Um, but it doesn't have to be on that big of a scale as this prompt says. It could be something smaller. It could be something you know, maybe a, you challenged a, your parents and you got them to see something differently and change the rules or something like that. If it's, in, if it's significant to you then and you feel inspired to write about it, then you have the freedom to do that. So number five is to discuss an accomplishment, event, or realization that sparked a period of personal growth and a new understanding of yourself or others. So when we think about accomplishments, again, we want to avoid those cliche experiences, winning the big game, or, um, and with personal, a period of personal growth, we also want to avoid talking about or writing about um, death, uh, even though that is very significant and it's important. We're not saying that it's not important. And for many students, when they experience the death of somebody close to them at a young age, it does spark a period of personal growth and a new understanding. However, um, admissions people have read so many essays about somebody that died. It could be a parent, a sibling, a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, a best friend. Those kind of things happen um, quite frequently. And um, they are significant and, and if you feel like you can write an essay about this um, and it's that important to you like it really is something that dominates your life then we, we can discuss it and we can discuss a way to write it that would be um, original to you and still have your voice but it is very common and if you want to separate yourself from the crowd avoid writing about those kind of things because sad to say admissions people sometimes become desensitized to that topic because they have just read about it so many times um, so moving on to the next one um, but those okay no before we move on so I, I told you what, maybe what not to write about but um, what are some things that might be important to write about so accomplishments maybe you achieved some type of um, training in the like in the summer or achieve some level of certification or you attended a really neat camp that exposed you to a career field um, those and those types of things are can be powerful essays especially if it helps you grow and understand what you want for the future those are great topics to write about um, number six, 
Describe a topic, idea, or concept you find so engaging that it makes you lose all track of time. Why does it captivate you? What or who do you turn to when you want to learn more? Okay, so um, I have some very passionate students that are very passionate about certain things. Some of them are passionate about Harry Potter. Some are passionate about um, TikTok. Some are passionate about sports. If, if these kind of things consume you and you get very engaged and very involved in those to the point that, or like a, playing a video game or something, you lose all track of time and you feel like you can write about it in a meaningful way that shows an admissions person your character and kind of how your mind works, then it could be a, a, a good topic to choose. Um, and what or who do you turn to when you want to learn more? So how curious are you is essentially what they're asking. Colleges love curious students. That's why they put so much money into research and giving those research opportunities. And then finally, if you are not inspired by any of those other six prompts, number seven says share an essay on any topic of your choice. It can be one you've already written, one that responds to a different prompt, or one of your own design. I've seen students write poems, haikus, all kinds of things. So um, if you're a creative and you just feel like you don't fit in the box or any of these boxes and you want to write something completely different, then you have the freedom to do that. So those are your prompts. And before you get to writing, and, and you choose a prompt, I, I would encourage you to choose two or three actually, initially, that spark your interest and you feel like, okay, I might have something I could write. So pick the top two or three, and then we're gonna create an outline from those two or three. So a few things you need to know beforehand is how many words and characters are allowed. So for the Common App, the main essay has a maximum of 650 words. It's roughly five paragraphs. Um, but if you go to 650 words, you better have a really interesting essay. Otherwise, 650 words can be kind of lengthy. Um, the sweet spot is usually somewhere between like 580 and 600 words, unless you have a good style of writing and it's an easy read that just flows so well that your admissions person can get through it. The earlier you submit applications and essays, the more likely admissions people are to read them all the way through. And the stronger your opening statement and your transitions between paragraphs, the more likely they are to be able to read it in a coherent way that makes sense to them and makes them want to keep reading more. So this is why we need an outline. When we just write from stream of consciousness, like a journal, there's no organization to our writing. And writing an interesting piece with so many limitations, you're limited on the words, you're limited on your topic, it requires some preparation. So preparing an outline, and I suggest preparing a five paragraph outline, um, you wanna do that, and I'll send you a form if you request it, that shows how to choose your topics and how to bullet some of your points and then organize your content from an intro to a body, a transition, and a close. Um, so first and foremost, identify the requirements for your essay, how many words, and then hand write an outline on paper. I know that can seem um, ancient. A lot of us are using the computer now and we no longer write essays on paper, but it's too easy on a computer to start writing and then delete things and not go back to it. At least with paper, if you start writing something and you scratch it out, oftentimes we go back and we say, maybe I should have used that. So it's good to see your notes and what you've scratched out. So I encourage you to use a pencil and paper, old school, and start writing in a notebook um, or on a piece of lined paper. You'll write a first draft after you have an outline, and then you'll want it to be reviewed by somebody. Now, 
I've always believed that you shouldn't have more than two people review your essay. Um, and those two people are the ones that are going to help make suggestions and edits. And if you're, if you want to include your parent, fine. Um, if you're comfortable with that, colleges kind of think parents should keep their hands off. I've seen some parents be a little too involved in the essay. One parent even tried to write the essay for their kid and it was very clear it was not the voice of the student. So I would say stick to a teacher, counselor, your consultant, um, and try to choose two people to review your essay. So you'll have your first draft, get it reviewed by somebody. You'll do a second draft, have it reviewed again by that same reviewer to make those edits. And then after the second draft is when you'll send it to one more person to review. And then you should have a final product. And I think the final product is the best piece to show your parents. Um, and really what your parents will be checking for at that point is just authenticity. Does your essay reflect who you are and who your character is. So, mistakes. Not handwriting an outline, not driving home your point, a poor intro or poor close, no transition statements between paragraphs. A big mistake is too many I statements. Oftentimes the first thing I do when I get an essay from a student is I do a search for I and if there are, if it's flooded with I, 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 we, that's one of the first corrections we start making. So as a student, you'll save yourself a lot of time and headache. If you go through your own essay and do just the control or command F, search for I, and see how many times you start a paragraph or a sentence or how many times you use that I in your, in your writing. Um, it's, it's natural, it's a habit, we all do it. Um, but it, it, it is very annoying. It's a pet peeve to a lot of admissions people. Um, another mistake is just not answering the question or not making sure you chose the right prompt. Repetitive words, almost every student has their favorite word. It could be the word very, it could be definitely. Um, I've seen students overuse the word obviously. There's so many words and everybody has their own. So as you're reading, look for repetition of words and avoid cliche statements. There are so many quotes, people love using quotes and it's okay to use a quote if it's something that's genuinely meaningful to you and it's not just a random quote thrown in there somewhere. And that's the first set of tips. Um, let's dig a little bit deeper on how to open and close your essay. And I'll show you just a sample. Here's a first draft of an opening um, from a student a few years back. So even when I was young, finances and the concept of investing money in stocks piqued my interest. I don't remember exactly how young I was when I first began to have a passion for stocks, but having the ability to make what I believe to be essentially free money was always incredible to me. In fact, I often wondered why nobody else was lured to it the same way I was. Now, this is not a bad opening. It's, I think it's engaging and it kind of piques your interest, but there's always room for improvement. And the thing that we wanna do when we're opening our essay is to paint a picture and ignite the senses through detail. So, and you do that by answering the question, what does it look like? What do you hear? What do you, or how do you feel? And describe in detail the surroundings. So opening an essay by recalling a memory or a place that goes along with your topic is really helpful. So we did that for this particular opening. And after a few revisions, this was our final draft. Um, and there's probably some errors in here, but that's okay. We're not going to get too hung up on perfection, and I'll tell you why in a little bit. But here's the, the final draft of that same opening statement. My first time experiencing the scent of a Cohiba Cuban cigar was in the seventh grade. 
Across the mahogany desk sat a man that would become my mentor. On the credenza behind, behind him was an almost empty crystal bottle of scotch. He wrinkled his forehead as he told me, you're the youngest client I have with your own stock portfolio. There was an air of uncertainty in his voice. Legally, I wasn't old enough to work and have a job, but that wasn't going to stop me from making money, and I had discovered just how to do that. So this is how we kind of tell a story, and don't feel pressured to be um, that creative and that uh, detailed, but if, if you can for a moment, you see the difference between the opening where you, he's simply telling you about himself and his interests versus in the second draft or the final draft, he's taking you to a scene from a memory and you can kind of picture some of the things, what it smelled like, what it looked like, what he heard. So that's how you can kind of ignite the senses in an essay. So an exercise we like to do um, when we have this um, presentation in person is a creative writing where we just take a picture like the one you have on your screen and answer the questions. What, what do you see? What do you hear? What do you smell? What do you feel? Um, so just take a moment and like look, look in this picture here, this particular moment in this person's life. Maybe you're that person with the backpack and the, the beanie on your head, or maybe you're the person standing behind that, that girl. Um, where are you? <coughs> it looks like New York City on the corner. You can probably hear um, the sound of the brakes on that truck coming up to the stoplight. You can hear people talking on their phones. You probably, if you've been to New York City, we all have a sense of what New York City kind of smells like. But maybe you describe it. Maybe it's hot dogs and glazed nuts on the corners because that's what they're selling, or the sewer because you know you're walking over sewer drains. You know that's what it means to kind of paint the picture. So when you're telling the story of your life or a moment in your life, try to recall some of those details and paint the picture and put your reader in it with you so that it's more engaging and more interesting and they feel more personally connected because that's where you, that's how you ignite an emotion or a feeling in somebody when you're writing and all of life is a sale we're all making sales businesses are making sales and essentially sales are a transference of feelings and emotions if you get somebody to feel something they're more likely to remember you and speaking of quotes, I believe it's Maya Angelou who says, people will forget what you do, they will forget what you say, but they never forget the way you make them feel. And that's what we want your essay to do, is make them feel something so that they remember you. So, we're almost out of time, but I have a couple final thoughts. And then um, please feel free to shoot me any questions or emails. Here are the four rules. We want to keep it simple. And this is according even to Tufts University, one of the most prestigious schools in, in America. Um, there are really only four essay writing rules to follow. Number one, it's time to be self-centered, time to brag, time to share about you. Two, it's all about detail. We talked about what they mean by details. We don't need a timeline of how things happen. You don't have to feel what happened in 17 years into one short essay. The details are the senses in the story. Write the way you speak. Um, do not, you do not need to be totally intellectual if you don't speak like an intellectual. Um, if you a lot of times we like to avoid using contractions like don't or wasn't, but if that's how you speak, then it's okay. This is not a formal essay. There will be on occasion a time where I might suggest to you to change the, the contraction to the two words, and that's okay. But write the way that you speak naturally. And then show your essay to two people, no more than two people. Let your parents see it because what you're going to find with essay writing is a lot like artwork. 
it's never finished. Your essays are never finished. You just have to find a point where you're happy with it and send it off. It's like wedding dress shopping for the ladies who parents, you know what I'm talking about. When you find the dress, you stop shopping. <laughs> because with your essay, the more people you show it to, there will always be room for revisions or improvement or opinions. And the more scholarly the person is, <laughs> the more grammatically correct they're going to make it. And it's not time to be perfect. This is the time to tell a story. So now it's your turn. Remember that you never have a second chance to make a first impression. One of my favorite quotes. Um, so use your essay to tell your story of who you are um, through a moment. Um, share a moment with them and go back on those prompts and I'm here to help you. So thanks for joining me this evening. I'll be talking to you guys very shortly. Have a great night and if you would like to um, have a copy of this presentation, please don't hesitate to send me an email. Take care. Bye-bye.